Hi guys, Black Box here. Another tutorial about the FS Labs A320 and in this video I'll explain a little bit about the trimmable horizontal stabilizer. The thing you can see here and you can actually see it moving at the present time. So I'll explain first of all why the THS, the trimmable horizontal stabilizer, is actually needed on an airplane. And after that, I'll also explain how to get the actual trim setting in the FS Labs A320 and how to set the trim. So let's jump right into it. Here we have a side on view of the beautiful A320. And there's certain forces, of course, that act on the airplane during flight. There is the lift vector then there's the center of gravity and of course the stabilizer itself also causes a tail down force. Without going too deeply into the uh, full theory of uh, aerodynamics, let me just say that an airliner needs to be built in a way that it is aerodynamically stable and that means if either a force by the pilot or an external force acts on the aircraft causing a change in the flight path. In an unstable aircraft, the aircraft itself will return back to its original flight path without any inputs by the pilot. In order to achieve this stability in an airliner, you have a position of the center of gravity and there is also a position for the center of the lift pressure. Since the center of gravity is always ahead of the center of lift pressure, you get a resulting nose down moment. So if you didn't have a horizontal stabilizer at the rear of the aircraft, then of course the aircraft would be unflyable. And hence every airliner has a trimmable horizontal stabilizer installed. And as you can see from the green lift arrow, it's actually a tail down force. And that counteracts the nose down moment and then produces the stable flight path. And if you take the time to look closely at a horizontal stabilizer, you'll see it's still a wing with aerodynamic function. However, it's inverted to a normal wing meaning that the curvature of the uh, stabilizer wing is at the bottom, not at the top. So what affects the center of lift pressure? Well, obviously a configuration change of the flaps will change the center. Um, or when you change the airspeed, if you slow down, for example, then as well, the center of the lift pressure changes. And assuming that the center of gravity remains the same at that time, then you will have to counteract the new momentum either by an elevator force or by moving the horizontal stabilizer. And when you're flying a conventional aircraft without auto trim, like the Boeing 737, you'll notice that immediately that if you do a configuration change or a speed change, you will have to trim the aircraft manually. Otherwise, you will have to keep on inputting a certain elevator force. And that can get uh, quite tiring after a while. So by changing the position of the horizontal stabilizer, you're actually changing the lift vector of the tail down force. And if you get it right, then you'll neutralize the new momentum that has been caused either by the speed change or the configuration change. Another factor affecting trim is obviously the change in the center of gravity. For example, by people moving around in the airplane or by the fuel, which is being slowly burned. And again, these changes of the center of gravity have to be counteracted either by the elevator or the trimmable horizontal stabilizer. Now let's have a look at the so-called mean aerodynamic cord, MAC. If the form of the wings were to be rectangular, 
then the definition of the MAC would be quite simple. However, the wings of a modern airliner are swept backwards. And so engineers have come up with a formula to calculate the uh, so-called mean aerodynamic chord. Now, this formula is extremely complicated, and of course, I understand it fully. <coughs> um, and to explain that formula to you would take me a long, long time, and I would probably bore you to death in the process. So let's just leave it at that, and um, just say that if you look top down onto an aircraft, you can draw two lines um, defining the leading edge MAC and the trailing edge MAC. The leading edge MAC would be equal to 0% and the trailing edge MAC would be 100%. So in a few moments we'll come across the percentage MAC for the zero fuel weight and also for the takeoff gross weight. Let's get back to the uh, side on view for a moment and have a look at the position of the center of gravity. You can see two red lines there, the LIMAC and the TMAC, so the leading edge MAC and the trailing edge MAC. And then you'll also have a permissible MAC range between 20 to 40 percent. Now these values are just example, they aren't exact limits of the A320. But looking at the actual center of gravity, which is being displayed here, you can estimate that the center of gravity is at around 27% MAC. As I have mentioned before, this value, the center of gravity value, changes during flight, and that is because the mass of the fuel slowly moves forward during flight as the fuel is consumed. But like I said, I'm not going to make this too complicated for now. Um, let's get back into the cockpit and have a look at the calculation of the trim setting of the A320. After the fueling, loading of cargo and the um, loading of the passengers has been completed, you are left with a so-called gross weight and a center of gravity for that gross weight value. When you go into the options menu, um, then payload, you'll see this page and on the top right line you'll see the gross weight for takeoff and also the CG for takeoff. In this case, 27.5% MAC. The next step will be to have a look at the trim scale setting next to the uh, thrust levers. You can see two rings, an outer ring and an inner ring. Now, first of all, you go to the outer ring and have a look for 27.5 which is uh, indicated by the red line there. And then you move to the inner ring and uh, look at the equivalent trim setting. In this case, it is about 0.2 units nose up. And that unit is then entered into the performance page next to the flap setting. So unfortunately, I'm not aware of any software that does the calculation for you. Um, TopCat, which is a good performance calculation tool, which I often use here in uh, the FS Labs A320, um, still doesn't give you, however, the uh, trim settings. Right, that's all for now. I hope I've uh, cleared up a few points regarding the trim settings and how to get them in the FS Labs A320. If you have any further questions, post them down in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, I wish you happy landings.